Before we begin with the good news, let's start with some bad news. Um, according to the WHO, the World Health uh, Organization, we expect about 50 million deaths by the year 2020, all due to chronic diseases. Um, I'd like to start with the why before we talk about the how and uh, when to use integrated functional medicine. So, if you just look at this uh, nice uh, pie chart that I designed, you'll see that over 60% of uh, um, the deaths in 2020 are due to chronic diseases, while only 20 to 30% are due to uh, acute and non-chronic diseases and trauma. Uh, the current issues with uh, the conventional model is the conventional model or the uh, allopathic model is focused on disease set. It's a disease center approach. When you go to your family doctor or any other uh, physician, um, he's going to ask you about your symptoms, he's going to order some tests, and he's going to give you a diagnosis. When you have a diagnosis, um, most likely the, the route is to give you the medication or send you for surgery or more tests. Um, this is costly. It costs a lot of money. Uh, in some cases, it's invasive. And uh, we find that it's very limited because with chronic diseases, in order to find out the root cause, we have to take a very lengthy history and um, not just rely on objective tests. There's a limited focus on prevention. Um, with most chronic conditions these days, um, we're just trying to work on the symptoms, not so much finding what caused the chronic disease condition. For example, diabetes, obesity, heart disease. This is a comparison between allopathic medicine and the integrated functional medical approach. As you can see with allopathic model, uh, when you have a diagnosis, it's usually due to a um, specific organ system, for instance, diabetes, issues with the pancreas. Um, you get to see a specialist, for instance, with diabetes, endocrinologist, the cost is costly. And the efficacy with conventional model is mostly for acute. We all know that with conventional medicine, if somebody has a heart disease or acute asthma attack, you're not gonna mess around with any alternative medicine, you're just gonna send them to the ER for acute intervention. And this is not the point of this uh, presentation. The point is, let's, let's do a better job with chronic diseases. So there's no question with allopathic conventional approach, acute medicine, that's where it shines. It costs a lot of money, but it works. With conventional approach, it's evidence-based, and that's why it's uh, used in most uh, Western countries 100% um, of the time. Integrative and functional model is more holistic. We're looking at the whole patient. It's uh, primary care driven, uh, not so much uh, use of specialists, and it's very low cost. The efficacy with integrative and functional uh, medicine is for chronic diseases. And as we saw earlier, that's the sound killer, 15 million expected deaths in 2020. So let's go to the why. Why integrated and functional medicine? We have increased stress in today's society, uh, more and more sedentary lifestyle. Uh, with regards to diet, we overconsume, but what we consume is very limited with regards to uh, the quality of the foods that we eat. Uh, the foods are uh, GMO, genetically modified, um, bulk, not so much quality nutrients in whatever we eat more industrial pollution, <clears throat> and physicians unfortunately are very good at what they do. They're trained in conventional model, but very limited in prevention, and they're not quali qualified to deliver evidence-based alternatives <clears throat> in order to reduce uh, risk of chronic diseases. Now, why is integrative uh, medicine? I asked you earlier, and I didn't see that many hands, mm -hmm. so let's, uh, let's answer the what. Uh, integrated medicine is not alternative medicine and it's not complementary medicine. Integrative, integrated medicine is the best of both worlds. We, we look at the patient and we diagnose the patient with conventional means, which means we do order blood tests, we do order the right uh, conventional approach tests. We integrate conventional approach with evidence-based alternatives, which means we only use 
what seems to work in the literature and research. Again, we use conventional diagnosis approach. Uh, we use the therapeutic order from the least invasive approach to the most invasive approach in integrative medicine. According to the Consortium of Academic Health Centers for Integrative Medicine, it defines integrative medicine as the practice of medicine that reaffirms the importance of relationship between a practitioner and a patient. It focuses on the whole person. Uh, it, it's informed by evidence and makes use of all appropriate therapeutic approaches. Healthcare professionals and disciplines to achieve optimal health and healing. By the way, I noticed that you have the wrong uh, lecture presentation, so if you want, please email me and I'll forward you the, the presentation in a PDF format. This is the integrated medicine wheel. And as you can see, there's a lot of modalities in this wheel. Uh, but it does include surgery and pharmaceutical drugs. We're not saying no to pharmaceutical drugs for surgery. Uh, they have their place in time. However, there are a lot of cases and instances where things like energy medicine, mind-body medicine, nutritional medicine, botanical medicine, and of course, clinical nutrition have a lot of value. <coughs> This is the seven therapeutic orders that we assess when we treat the patients. We always look at the baseline, the determinants of health first. When I see patients, the first thing I ask is not what kind of symptoms you have, but how's your lifestyle? I mean, how many hours do you sleep? Do you wake up refreshed? Um, do you recall your dreams? Do you go into deep REM sleep? Do you exercise regularly? How's your diet? Do you drink enough water? And so forth. And then we go into other things, and we try to help the patients from the ground up. <clears throat> the second uh, approach is to use things like meditation, hydrotherapy, energy medicine, again, low invasive. Third approach, we use to support the weakened system before we give the drug and surgery. Fourth, we use structural integrity, support with body works, massage, chiropractic, physiotherapy, podiatry. Again, from the ground up, we need to work on the structure. And then, we use natural remedies from diet, nutraceuticals, botanical medicine, uh, vitamins, minerals, etc. And if that doesn't work based on research, then we use drugs and refer to high intervention such as chemotherapy, surgery, uh, if it needs to be. <clears throat> This is another recap. We always use from the low force, the low invasive, to the uh, invasive therapeutics intervention. With conventional model, the main focus is order six and seven for pharmaceuticals and surgery, which is a disease center. Um, but that's again, it, it focuses on acute medicine, not so much chronic medicine. Um, with IFM, integrated functional medicine, the focus is on the patient, not so much the disease. Integrated and functional medicine doctors usually focus on order one to five. And if that doesn't seem to work again, we go into six and seven. Now what is functional medicine? Functional medicine, similar to integrated medicine, is not alternative, it's not complementary medicine. It addresses the physiology of the patient before we look at the pathology, before we look at the disease, we see how the patient physiology functions <clears throat> before it becomes pathological. And we do a good job by connecting the dots. For instance, when you see a family doctor and he refers you to a specialist, usually the specialist deals with a specific organ system. They really don't look at the other organ systems and now they interconnect. Our body is one entity with multiple organs. And when you just focus on one organ system, you might miss both. Because the body doesn't function that way. It's not just, you know, there's you know, your diabetes, there's issue with the pancreas, let's give your insulin, the formula, et cetera. Could be the diet is, 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 is uh, not proper, um, could be not exercising, um, maybe there's, uh, you're not absorbing certain nutrients that you're supposed to, maybe there's a deficiency in chromium. So that's what the difference between functional medicine doctors and conventional approach. With functional medicine, we always integrate the conventional diagnosis approach. And we use also functional labs. And I'll talk about functional labs as we go on. The emphasis with functional medicine is clinical nutrition, genetics, and biochemistry. According to the Institute of Functional Medicine, 
Functional medicine addresses the underlying causes of disease using systems-oriented approach. It engages both the patient and the practitioner in a therapeutic partnership. Functional medicine addresses the whole person, not just isolated sets of symptoms. Functional medicine practitioners spend time with their patients, listen to their story histories, looking at the interactions among genetic, environmental, lifestyle factors that can influence long-term health and complex chronic diseases. Now, what are the main benefits of integrated and functional medicine? As opposed to conventional model, the focus is patient, the patient-centered holistic approach. The approach is very comprehensive and collaborative, which means we do refer to specialists when we need to, but we take a very detailed, long history with the patient. We spend a lot of time with the patient to really understand the root cause of disease. We also ordered what we call functional laboratory tests. The treatment with functional medicine is, in most cases, not invasive, very affordable, and very safe. There's very low margins of error with the therapeutic that we use, and it's evidence-based and scientific. We're not using alternatives that don't seem to work. For instance, Dr. Harvey mentioned acupuncture. We always use acupuncture, but only in the cases where it seems to work. For instance, chronic pain. Uh, we're not going to use it for anything else that doesn't seem to, uh, to be supported by the research. This is a comparison between integrated medicine and functional medicine. With regards to the diagnosis and treatment, DX diagnosis, TX is the treatment model. With integrated medicine, the, there's less uh, emphasis on uh, the diagnosis. There's more emphasis on changing the treatment with evidence-based alternative, that's EPCAM, evidence-based complementary alternative medicine. That's where the focus is. With functional medicine, it's the other way around. We spend more time with the patient, uh, and we order a lot of functional labs. The treatment approach, as opposed to integrated medicine, is typically uh, with clinical nutrition and biochemistry. I would also add genetics. Those are the main areas that we treat with functional medicine. So I believe the integration of integrated medicine and functional medicine is the way to go. Because in one hand, we're using a very good diagnosis and uh, assessment protocols. And in another hand, with functional medicine, the treatment is very uh, uh, specific and it's very low invasive. I like this. Uh, this uh, picture because what it tells us is so, many times we're just looking at what's on the surface and we're not looking at what's the underlying causes of many of the diseases and what leads to those diseases. For instance, cancer. Cancer is not just um, a collection of symptoms and a pathology that is going out of time. It's, there's a lot of underlying causes to cancer and other chronic diseases from inflammatory imbalances structural imbalances, immune imbalances, could be hormonal, uh, ability to detoxify, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and if it's not working properly, the cell is deprived of, of so many nutrients, so your body is always fatigued, low energy, etc. This is one example. Exposure to toxins, toxic chemicals, multiple chemical sensitivities, issues with digestion. So when you look at all those mechanisms, you see that diseases are just diseases. They're not just collections of symptoms. There's something that led to the disease to occur. Um, all those things at the bottom, the underlying causes, are just mechanisms. And that's what we do in functional medicine. We're looking at the mechanism and we treat mechanisms. We're not treating diseases per se. This is the clinical matrix of integrative and functional medicine. Uh, earlier I mentioned that uh, when you see specialists, for instance, you're zooming into an organ system. You go to see an ophthalmologist or optometrist is going to look into your eye and he's going to say, you know what, your vision is impaired. I see some uh, maybe nicking, maybe there's some high blood pressure or some uh, we have to check your diabetes. But beyond that, they're not going to expand. With functional medicine and integrative medicine, we're looking at every single organ system and we see how they interconnect. Um, I'll just give you one brief example. 
somebody comes in with um, with an ulcer with conventional approach the uh, treatment is anti ulcer medication either PPI um, or taking uh, <coughs> sort of something just to calm the, the, the reflux with functional medicine approach we're looking at aggravating factors we're looking at um, what foods you shouldn't eat if you're exercising if you're drinking enough uh, if there is any immune or inflammatory balance that triggers the inflammatory response in your GI tract, is there an oxidative stress? Is there an environmental issue that uh, leads to, uh, to your ulcer? Are you under stress? Are you not sleeping enough? All this thing can cause uh, ulcers. But we're not just going to rush and prescribe you a PPI for, uh, for an ulcer. Uh, integrated with functional medicine wellness approach, Again, we're using a comprehensive history. Uh, we're looking at the review system, which means we're looking at all organ systems and how they interconnect. We're trying to connect the dots. Um, I often tell patients I'm a, I feel like I'm a de 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 detective in many cases. I'm not uh, here to just give you a diagnosis and prescribe your medication. We need to see what's going on with, with, your, um, with your wellness. The physical exam could be focused, but often it's not. We always do a <coughs> wellness exam. We order conventional labs and imaging in order to eliminate any red flags. We are not just assess lifestyle changes. I mean, if there's a cancer with a patient or if there's a serious disease, we want to rule this out before we pro uh, progress any further. We always do additional investigations and questionnaires, such as diet diary and sleep diary. And then we order the functional labs. And this is where functional medicine shines and most conventional approach don't even go there. Uh, I summarized it in a trilogy approach and that's what I use in my practice. <clears throat> this is a way to assess the patient's physiology. So we're looking at really three big areas that we can test for, aside of all the questionnaires and the history taking that we do. We're looking at the nutritional status, hormones and neurotransmitters imbalances, and the environmental or chemical sensitivities. Now, under the nutritional um, portion, we're looking at three, three things. Uh, food reactions, allergies, and sensitivities, and if there's any intolerances. We're also looking at micro and macro nutrient deficiencies. Are we absorbing the foods that we're eating? And if we're absorbing, are we utilizing them? There's another uh, new area in nutrition called nutrigenomics, in which we specifically individually tailor nutrition and diet based on your genetics. And many professionals out there will give you a fat diet. This is. Uh, Doctor, this diet, this is, uh, you know, you read the book, um, South Beach diet, there's so many diets and fat diets, but in many cases, they only work short term. They're not really individualized. Each one of us has different biochemistry and different genetics. And unless you analyze what, what type of genetic and what uh, physiology you are, you're not going to be um, getting all the, the, the right benefits from the specific diet. So this is what we do in functional medicine. We do a lot of tests. Nutrigenomics is one of them. You can Google nutrigenomics. It's a very uh, interesting field right now in medicine where we specifically do a nice diet based on your genetics. And after that, we assess for food sensitivity, food allergies, and assess for any deficiencies. The second portion of the tests that we do, we check for hormones and neurotransmitters imbalances. The third, environmental. We're looking for any chemical sensitivities and any history of any exposure to certain toxicities. Now, if you have exposure to a certain uh, toxin or chemical, it doesn't go away. Um, in many instances, the body stores it. And over the years, we reach a total load. <coughs> and, you know, the, the last rod that broke the, the camel's back, that's what happens in medicine too. You keep building up those uh, toxins and chemicals if you're exposed to them, and eventually you can get sick. So we need to test them before you get sick. So functional medicine is about mechanism and finding the, the root cause while it happens. It's more like a gradual uh, changes. It's not, with, with conventional approach, it's either you have symptoms and you're sick or you're healthy. There's no gradual. 
for instance, with obesity or diabetes, the changes that happen over time, with functional medicine, you can actually stop them, arrest them while it happens. It's a gradual process. If you're not exercising, we'll put you on the right individualized exercise program that is good for your genetics. If you're not eating right, we'll change your diet based on your, your chemistry and physiology. But we're not going to let you go and uh, reach the point of no return and become diabetic and be dependent on medication. <clears throat> so this is my personal approach to when I do a functional, when I order functional labs. Um, big emphasis on nutritional, environmental, and hormonal imbalances. We're looking at mechanisms and the interactions between those three areas. When I see a patient, I'm not just ordering a CBC or a basic blood work. I'd like to see more than that. I want to see if there is any exposure to, past exposure to any uh, toxins. I want to see if you're eating properly, and if you are eating properly, are you absorbing the nutrients? It's one thing to eat and have a healthy diet, balanced diet. It's another thing to see if you're absorbing what you're eating, or you're just eliminating. Um, with regards to hormones, the hormone tests and the neurotransmitters tests is not what conventional model tests for. With the conventional approach, we're looking for pathology. If you're hypothyroid, we'll give you syndroid. And here we're looking at the physiological status of your hormones, from sex hormones to adrenals to thyroid, while they deplete, while they change. And if they are going that route, we'll try to reverse it. Many cases that I see that already according to the conventional approach are irreversible, we can, with what we do, we can reverse a lot of those uh, 